We have three staff pastors here as well. Yeah, none of you YouTube, TikTok only losers. You're not saying you don't disagree with the statement in the world, not of the world, per se. Yes, and there's things that I've grown up hearing that's like, oh, that's that's what it is. Don't touch me yet. I have not ascended the Father. You believe he? It's a, it's a body, but a different body than he had on Earth. New body. I love this quote so much, and this is so weird. I pulled up my Kindle app for this book I had read a long time ago, and every highlight is gone. It's the move of the devil. You've only been baptized once. If you love Jesus, but you struggle with reading the Bible consistently or understanding it and applying it in your life. I totally understand. Just because the Bible can be confusing doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. There's a really easy way to learn the Bible in a short amount of time. I cannot speak high enough about Theos U and Theos Seminary. Theos U is kind of like the Netflix of theology. It's a subscription that you pay for every month. It's like $14.99 a month. They have hot topic courses about things that are happening right now in culture. They have stuff on the Old Testament, stuff on the New Testament. They have systematic theology. They have all different kinds of stuff. And I'm telling you, this is the best thing out there to learn the Bible for average, normal people, just like me and just like you. And it has absolutely revolutionized the way I read, study, and apply scripture in my life. If this is something you're interested in, I have a 20% discount code for you. You can get 20% off for the rest of your life as long as you stay subscribed. Here's all you gotta do. Click the link down below in the description. It will give you instructions on what to click, what to type in at checkout for you to get 20% off. Ladies and gentlemen, John Rush, Hello. Dave. Chris, Dave Dutch Bros. <laughs> John, coming here from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes. Friends with Dave. Best friends. John is speaking at our youth conference tonight, so we're recording some Purpose. stuff. That's right. And how do you two know each other? Let the people know. He uh, led worship for my youth camp in a while, and I hated him because he was so cool. Yeah. And then I tried to become his friend. No, actually, right. this is for real, though. He invited himself yeah. to my wedding yeah. and just showed up. I thought, was, I thought you said he was in the wedding. No, no he I was in my wedding. Oh. A year, so I was married August 16th. Yeah. He was married August 15th, the, ne the, next, the next year. year. Gotcha. I was in his wedding by the next year, but... The reason we're friends, legitimately, he invited himself to my wedding. Yeah, we I weren't, we weren't like, friends I, yet. I just literally, and he drove from. I said, I want to be around what's on this guy's life, and I felt like a kind of impression from the Holy Spirit. So I just told him, I said, Hey, I'm just gonna come out to your wedding. You don't need to like host me or anything, but I just love to celebrate and you. He just showed up with his girlfriend to <laughs> my, my wedding. My girlfriend, who was then later be my wife. That's amazing. Yep. Shout out, Sid. Sid, Chris, Sydney, Chris. And his we wife. Have, we have uh, three staff pastors here as well. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. I, I've been yeah, none of you YouTube, TikTok only losers. <laughs> Say it right into that camera. Right losers. Mm -hmm. mm, here's my opinions, but I've never actually pastored anyone. Yep. What's up? Oh, that that sounds like a topic. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. How long have you been uh, in like in your same setting at your church? And like, so you have different roles. You had youth. You're like associate. Yeah. But how long have you been on staff? Like paid staff? Yeah. I started as part time in 2014. Okay. I was the volunteer youth pastor for a year and a half before that. Yeah. Yeah, so you've been hitting like 10 years straight, though. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, I mean, technically, I started in high school. Yes. As for better or for worse. As everyone. All three of them. No, 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 no. no not everyone. The real not, ones. Yeah, you're not talking like my high school is my mission field. You're saying you actually like. I was preaching at it. You like I was planning the services and stuff like that. Yeah. Go you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. For better or for worse. I think I was still sending at that point. <laughs> I was too. I was just doing both. <laughs> no, but that was good. Um, okay, we were talking about this last night, and then John was like, hey, maybe we should save this. And we're going to let the conversation go wherever it goes. Maybe we should table that for a later conversation. Maybe we should table it for a later conversation. Let's talk offline. Right. But, you know, I just oh want to let the Holy Spirit guide this conversation. No. Um, let's start with this. Uh, Dave, what are your thoughts on baptism? You asked me this question, but I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Um, and listen, it's okay if you disagree with me. I know we just met. Yeah, I hope you feel right at home right now. Um, I do. You got me Dutch bro. So. Yeah. so fourth yeah. generation pastor, currently yep. serves as next gen pastor at yep. his church. Yeah, uh, under his parents yeah. with his brothers, leads a lot at awesome. his church. A lot yeah. of great ministry between the three. Yeah, all of us have like about a decade plus in ministry. Yep. You guys are pastors' kids. Yeah, and is your dad first generation ministry or second? First. Okay. Because your second his dad got saved. So you're yeah. fourth awesome. generation. You're second generation, yep. I'm first generation. Yeah. Sweet. It's cool. Yeah. Look at that. I think the baptism conversation is um, interesting. 
I would say it this way. When you've grown up in, in ministry, yeah. um, and it's so habitual, like it's second nature. Like just, I, I, it's, it, it's, it's something I, like being at church, I, I feel like I was there as much as being at home growing up. It's like totally just, so there's things like we talk about the Christian needs and things like that. But yeah. I also think, and, and maybe speak to this in, in your uh, instance, but for me, there's things like, that my dad or my grandfather or they would say I'm like oh yeah for for sure and then I would go to preach it mm -hmm. and I couldn't find it in scripture okay and it wasn't that True. they weren't like living by the principles of the word but an example I'd give you would be like uh, we're in the world but not of the world that's nowhere in scripture okay Paul says that we don't wage war as the world does mm -hmm. that's the scripture so there's just certain things I've kind of grown up hearing believing going with sure. And it's not that I doctrinally believe like vastly different than You're not my, saying my you don't family. disagree with the statement in the world, not of the world no, no, no. per se. It's, it's not just, in the Bible. It's, not it's directly, just not in the Bible. But right. there's things that have been said. But you assumed it was in the Bible. Yes. And yeah. there's things that I've grown up hearing that's like, totally. oh, that's that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously the older I got and the more I've just searched scripture, things like that, I've begin to kind of unearth yeah. like new understandings yeah. that I didn't have. And so for me with baptism, at least the question has been there. And some of my team and some of our staff has just been kind of researching it deeply because I think we've made very like blatant statements like that this is a public declaration of our faith, which I'm not saying it isn't, but is it exclusively that is the mm. question I've been having. And I started really feeling this when uh, in 2023, I preached the entire book of Acts the whole year, top to bottom, mm -hmm. 55 teachings I did between in, like in person and, and online exclusive teachings. I've he didn't talk it. to me for a year. <laughs> <laughs> He's not joking. I'd be, oh like, <laughs> I'd be like, hey man, I just looked at porn. Will you talk to me as my accountability partner? He's like, no, I'm studying no, Acts. No, it was not I'm that I'm studying extreme. Acts. <laughs> it was not that extreme. Dave, that's kind of rude. It's not that extreme. It's close. But I, I did though, like devote my life to studying it. Like yeah. I, I studied it. And so as I did, and you see Acts 2, 3,000 are added to their number that day. Well, that means they're baptized. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit shows up in the upper room. They cool. baptized 3,000 people. Right. I think one of the things we'll even talk about, too, is the administrative gifts of the apostles. Mm -hmm. Think about how they had to administrate 3,000 people saying yes to Jesus, organizing how they'd be baptized. Like, mm -hmm. just... Right. But then the question you're asking is, like... What role does baptism play What does that? that play? Yeah. Uh Kind of as we're talking about it, I want to look up a couple of scriptures so I can quote them directly. But I'm just guys. We're on a podcast. Hi. This is my family. Hi. This is my Hello. this is my baby. Hi. She just woke up. Hi. Uh, I love you guys. Love you. Mwah. Love you, Sailor Rose. <laughs> Dude, I feel like with your ADHD and Dutch Bros, like you should not. This be, is nothing caffeine, but you should not be doing that. Okay, so. I this I haven't out. even answered the question yeah, yet. Yeah, but we're setting it up. I'm yeah, just trying to know. set up yeah. like so the the my thought is I'm wondering how much baptism does actually play in the salvation experience. The necessity of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that if someone physically is unable to or let's say um, the thief on the cross mm -hmm. never got baptized. But I'm wondering as I'll pull up the scriptures now, as we kind of, I got as John right keeps interrupting I got me. Right, okay, I got he's right in a plan. Here. As he keeps interrupting, he clearly wants to talk. Um, how important it is. Yeah. That's what I, so I want to, I'm just going to like a, a setup. I just wanted to make sure the I tension was a, set for the audience. I want to give audience. an opinion in a second, but that's just my question I'm kind of leaning into. Yes. Totally. So totally. the, yeah, the question is, is what place does it play? This morning I was reading Matthew chapter three. Mm -hmm. on, I'm just been reading Matthew right now, mm -hmm. but that is when, uh, Jesus is getting baptized. Obviously, we see like the necessity of that. But what stands out to me in this instance is that when the Pharisees and Sadducees were walking up, um, I was reading a commentary that suggested that John's uh, response to them being a brood of vipers and him being frustrated with them is that they were coming to get baptized with an unrepentant heart. Like they were just like coming to do it. Like I, this commentary was like suggesting that they didn't come to like mock John. They actually were like, oh, everyone's doing this. Like, let's, let's get in with this. And he's kind of like, hold up. You know, like, you know, you're not a fruit bearing good fruit. You know, you're going to be cut down at the root. You know, and he stopped. He stopped them because mm -hmm. of their unrepentant heart. Um, when you quickly just do a quick, like, just topsoil 
look at some of the verses that are, are said about um, uh, baptism. First Peter 3, 21 says, Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus. Um, John 3, this is Jesus, John 3, 5. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot um, enter the kingdom of God. Born of water, though, is referring to your mama. Okay. Just making sure we have this that is good. in context, yes. Are we sure about that? Yeah, it's being born of your mom and then born of the Spirit. Well, why would Jesus need to clarify if you were born? Of course you're alive. Yes, but he's saying you not only obviously are you born in the natural, but you need to yeah. be born in the supernatural. I just want to make sure that's not a baptism verse in my opinion. I'm just putting well, that's, that's put, cool. Putting that on the now table. I want to study it more. And then Mark, Mark 16, 16 says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but wh whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now, I, I, let me just clarify, because I do think there can be a, um, and I want to make sure I'm always careful of this too, it's like I want to I want to be the punk rock of whatever the evangelical or Pentecostal you know <laughs> belief is, and I just want to you know there's almost like there can be like this uh, sexy you know draw to like yeah. I just want contrarian be yes yes yes, and I can I can tell you my views on baptism, I I think with a good conscience I can say I I don't get to where I get to be, because of that you know I'm not just trying to like yeah yeah You're muddy the waters the or whatever and, totally totally, yeah. but. Um, and I also just want to clarify as well, if somebody doesn't agree with me on this, I, I don't think it's because necessarily they don't think that baptism is not important if they, dif if they differ on what the function is. Yeah. And I could be wrong on this. I love what Jonathan Haidt says. He says, always argue like you're right, always listen like you're wrong. And that's what I, tr that's what I try, that's tr kind of how I try to approach some of these issues. Um, but with that being said, do you, so you, you were saying, and it sounds like you were saying this last night as well, just diving in, going okay, reevaluating something that you had grown up believing. Yeah, that's this may be a this journey where like you're asking questions and you may go, hey, if I had to put money on it, I think baptism is a symbolic thing Christians do after they have faith in Christ. Would you say that that is your current stance? But that foundation for that belief is starting to crumble a little bit and you're just asking questions or yeah. would you disagree with that? Where are you at? Okay. So my whole life I've been raised and I think even right now in our church, and I believe a lot of churches, they like, like on a Sunday morning, we'll do this. We'll be like, we're about to right now baptize a number of people and we're going to baptize them as a declaration, a profession of their faith today in Jesus. That part is true, but I think we're now missing some ingredients to that. Mm -hmm. And I think many times, how many times, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but somebody gets baptized and then they walk away from the faith after that. And so now I'm like, okay, that wasn't taken very seriously. What was just done? Like I was baptized mm -hmm. at the age of 13 and I mm -hmm. definitely, you know, fell into sin after that. And there was times of repentance, but I, I kept going forward in some way with Jesus now, then there's the question. Sorry, I'm going to answer your question. No, but I'm, fine, I'm yeah. trying to set a bunch of questions up. Should somebody get rebaptized? Like, if they fell away from God and then they come back, should they get rebaptized? Or, like, should they have never gotten baptized in the first place? Or, like, how important does this play? And the question I've been now struggling with is when I started really studying the book of Acts, I'll mm -hmm. just give two verses from the book of Acts. I'm not saying that it's our exclusive text, but you see a lot of baptism going on. Mm -hmm. Acts 2, 38, the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit shows up. And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins. So the question I'm asking is, does baptism play a role in the forgiveness of sin? Now, I know the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. is where the power's at. I understand his death and resurrection. But now I'm like, okay, I, I've always my whole life just only thought baptism, we say, is just as Jesus went, you know, in the tomb for three days and then he rose again. Baptism is our declaration that we are now dying to ourselves and alive in Christ. It's this symbol. I'm asking, is it only a symbol? And mm -hmm. now I'm I'm struggling to with 100% certainty mm -hmm. say it's only a symbol. Acts 22, verse 16. And now why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Mm -hmm calling on his name. There's just too many verses, and I can keep going, but even out of the book of Acts, there's too many verses that are are saying, or for me, showing more than just a symbol. It's literally saying, like, 
obviously repent, like you referenced with John the Baptist, but it's it's a washing away of the sin. It, it, there is a a certain holy purification that I'm questioning now is taking place more than I ever realized or thought. And can I now in good conscience, and this is the question we're having as a church Mm -hmm. and with our staff and even with our pastor, I think this is what teams and and staffs and churches don't do. They they do what the Bible says, which is baptize people, Mm -hmm. preach the gospel, uh, let people come to know Jesus as Lord and say yes to Jesus, get baptized. That's great. They don't do well teaching what it stands for and what it represents. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be like the same thing of like being like, oh, yeah, we're a church that believes in speaking in tongues okay, what the heck does that mean? What is speaking in tongues? What role does it play? Like, what does the Bible say about it? I think with baptism, we're doing the same thing. Make sure you get baptized. Okay, great. What role does it play? What's sure. the importance of it? Like, yeah. there, should we have a class or something to teach it? So what we're doing right now is we're going back to these scriptures. We're even sitting down with our pastor, sitting down with all like our executive team, our pastoral team, all that, and going, okay, when we're going to say this from the pulpit, we need to make sure we're clarifying, teaching people what does this mean? Because we're not doing this to put on a good show during our third song where the worship team is singing some <laughs> elevation worship song. Most likely you just came to the Oh, I didn't even realize what you were yeah. <laughs> um, But where we're just singing this song. And did Ryan, John make you wear that? Uh, yeah, he did. Um, okay. I wanted to wear some Weird One merch, but... Um, Forced him. Anyways, like we're singing this great song and people are getting dunked and it's on the iMeg and everyone's yeah. clapping. And it's like, oh, great moment. It makes Sunday look great. That's not why we're doing it. Totally. So let's not minimize it to that either. Let's make sure, sure. we're very clear. Yeah. Why are we doing this? What does it mean? Yeah. I'm wondering that baptism plays a very key role in in the salvific mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. And I and, you know, and I'm struggling probably even to clarify and identify it 100. Like to say this is what I believe because it's a new yeah. conversation. Totally. For me, but I don't think it's just a symbol anymore. John, where do you agree or disagree with that? Well, call them out if you disagree. No, no, no. I, I would say I'm, I'm processing the same thing. Even when I just I looked up in the faith study Bible, what you said about John three five, the main point in this one reference that says that it shouldn't be related to water baptism mm-hmm. is specifically so that water baptism is not related to any kind of salvation moment. Huh. But that comes from so then. You, but that to me epitomizes what a lot of people's general fears are about adding more to the meaning of baptism than um, than what is traditionally known as a public declaration, which mm-hmm. I think comes from this old, hundreds of year old fear of like pre-Reformation Catholicism, <clears throat> where there was so many rituals, there's so many things, like th- 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 that, that before the Reformation, you know, there was, it was so hard to get to God and there was so much priestly control and it had become so much, I think that we're still like in, in Protestant circles so scared of things that make it seem like the church or a pastor is trying to control Mm -hmm. or limit someone's um, salvation moment. Totally. And I think, like, even think of the Andy Stanley moment. Like, what's that verse Andy Stanley always quotes? His whole ministry is based on it. Like, let us not make it hard for them to come to Christ. Right. I don't know what the reference is. I don't, yeah. But in my experience, the thing that I, the reason why I'm wrestling with it, and I would even say that I'm even wrestling with this when it comes to um, what to do with someone after they have, ask Jesus into their heart, I have typically seen that our efforts to make following Jesus or becoming a Christian easier oftentimes equates to more people walking away. Hmm. And I think that... I mean, it's so easy to get in. That means it's also easy to get out. And we don't do what Jesus said, which is teach them a wise builder counts the cost. Mm -hmm. And I think we miss so much of the cultural realities of when when we're seeing someone get saved and come to Christ in the in the New Testament the social cultural financial sacrifice right. even, even like when those Jews were coming out to um, get baptized with John the Baptist they were coming all the way out into the wilderness mm-hmm. they're coming with like a heavy like part you know water baptism comes most people think from like like a, a type of Jewish ritual washing that was all about repentance it was like admitting like think of how strongly like Jews felt about sin. They're like, it's death. It's like, it is death. It is blood animal sacrifice. And they come to this, this water baptism being like, ah, oh, whoa, is, oh, I'm so bad. Whereas I feel like we're just like, no, don't feel bad. Just pray this prayer and like, we'll give you a journal. And I think it was all done out of a great heart. I just wonder, yeah. I'm not saying we should gatekeep salvation. Mm-hmm. I just wonder if we could do a little bit better to like 
help people know the decision that they're actually making. Yeah. Look, look out of a out of a desire to help them actually follow Jesus more long term. Look at even Mark 16, 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Uh-huh. Not whoever believes. But at the same time, if I'm if I'm gonna play devil's advocate, yes, that, what, I, what, I what, what, what would what would you say? Um I don't want to name anybody in particular, but um, somebody that maybe you know that's that's a pastor who doesn't believe that baptism is at all linked to salvation. What would what would their response to that verse be? Like, what would you think they would say? I, I maybe they could say something like, uh, "Whoever believes and is willing to use baptism as a declaration of that belief, yeah. it's the following next yeah. step." Yeah, like yeah. to to show to show that I am serious about what yeah. I believe, right. and I'm not saying. Maybe that could, it's like, it's like that could, maybe that could be right. But mm-hmm. just, it's like Matthew 28, 19. This just was really hitting me. Some of Jesus' last words before he's going to ascend into heaven right, right, right. are, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them. Mm-hmm. Like, baptize them. And then 1 Corinthians 12, 13, here's the building of the church, getting in. How, like, how are we getting in? How, how are you a part of this thing? For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Like, how do you become a part of the body of Christ? You're baptized yeah. into it. Yeah. So, so, I, so that's well, and, another and, thought. And I'm I'm not my rebuttals, I would say, and I, I'm still wrestling with this. Keep I've just talking, seen so I'm many. I've just seen so many students. I've seen so many people have amazing initial salvation moments. They get dunked, and we have done. And I'll say, me, I'm just going to take responsibility. So little to help them understand their repentance and their new lifestyle. Yeah. And do like that. That I think that that's what causes them to almost then be confused when certain things come up or not just understand it. So I would say that someone who believes in that would, 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 I was going to say the great commission. I would think they would say, make disciples comma baptizing them. I think that people read the, and and I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying, I think they read like, Hey, you make them, they're a disciple and then you baptize them. I think they would read Jesus's word that way as a rebuttal. So, um, let me. Let, I'll share with you where I stand, and then yeah, if you that, if you go if you you know if you disagree or whatever, poke back. You know, I'm, but um, the the question Paul answers in Romans six is um, why should we keep on not keep on sinning? And I think that if I'm not consciously thinking, okay, what would the Apostle Paul say if I was just to ask answer that? And a student in the youth ministry at my church goes. Hey, well, if God's forgiven me, why can't I keep on sinning? That whole misuse of mm-hmm. grace thing that mm-hmm. we've all done. Reckless love died of Jesus. <laughs> exactly. I would be like, listen, um, the reason I tell my daughter to not run on the road is because I, because there's serious consequences. Yeah. And I think that's that I can make a biblical argument for, yes, of course, sin still has consequences um, in this lifetime. Of course. But Paul's answer is, here's why you should stop sinning. Don't you remember that you have been baptized? Mm-hmm. So, um, okay, so put a pin in that. Here's, here's what I think it is. When faith in Christ is like conception in the womb. So as Christians, we believe that life begins at conception, that there is a real human being made in the image of God in, in the mother's womb, but they are not publicly born yet. I, I view baptism as the birth. So baptism is not, I don't like saying it as much as it's faith is step one, this is step two, and we kind of make this almost like perfect ladder of here's exactly how God is going to consecrate you. And because mm-hmm. because the Christian life is just, it's never this upward trajectory, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like, and people, freaking Israel and in people the find him in a lot of different ways. Oh, we turn to the idol yeah. and then we got to learn. Da, da, da. And baptism <clears throat> is that public. So when you have your faith in Christ, just like just like a child in the womb, you are a human. You are a Christian when you have faith in Christ. But you are not complete in that faith yet. It has not been embodied. It has not been public. And so baptism is this public, if you will, coming out into the world, being born into the family. And that's why it's celebrated and we cry when the baby's born. It's not because there wasn't a human in the womb before that, mm. but now it's here. Um, so that would be just in a kind of at a high level, what I think baptism is, if I could give it an illustration, Mm -hmm. but, um, one, one other thing I would say is this, I love how one author put it. I don't remember his name, but I think this is absolutely beautiful and it helped me so much. 
when we're preaching, we, all of us preach the word of God here. Well, I mean, John a little bit less than Dave and I, but everybody here preaches the word of God. <laughs> and favorite <laughs> podcast. I, just, I was gonna ever. I was actually gonna aim it at Dave, but I thought this would be funnier if I hit it at John. But no, listen. Because you've never heard me preach. I've heard you preach. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> just, no, but um when we're preaching, like so when we communicate one to another, very it, it's it's never just information passing from my mind to John's mind or to Dave's mind. We use tone and volume up or down. Mm -hmm. We use body language. We use our hands. We, we Our face, our facial expressions communicate something. That's why it's so easy to misunderstand somebody when they're just sending you a text yeah. without yeah. even without even periods You mean like when you send them points. a text and they don't respond back or hard Exactly. Heartache, like you did to me yesterday. That's, exa that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. I was doing that as an illustration. Yeah. <laughs> um. Dave, I'm, I'm this close to muting you. No, I'm just kidding. But so what I the sacraments of baptism and the Eucharist, Lord's Supper, communion, all three of those words I like. The sacraments are God's body language. That's good. Um, it's the way that God visibly communicates something to us. So we hear the preaching of the word. You can preach the word without the sacraments, but the sacraments cannot be demonstrated without the word. Mm -hmm. So the sacraments are God. It's it's a way that God preaches to you in a visible way because we're all embodied people. We don't have a relationship with anybody that that does not have a body. Yeah. So it's not. That's why I can't stand. Just I'm not talking about somebody who just started watching a church online and then they're joining and you know, like I'm I'm talking about people who have been serving Jesus forever and they're like I don't want to attend any local church or be a part of a gathering or have any pastors. I just yeah. want to watch somebody on YouTube because church to me is all about picking who I get most inspired by. Fed. Right, yeah. It, that's that's the word, so right? Tough. And so what happens is you're literally just having this disembodied experience and church just becomes absorbing information and the sacraments are the antidote to that. I think with so, that becomes so interesting like what I just read here was I think it was 1 Corinthians yeah, First Corinthians twelve. How for in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. That yeah, that embodied experience. Like you're a part of a body. I yeah. think that that connects well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think I, again, this is coming now. Fifteen years, um, in the church, thirteen of those being in like, like working at a church, seeing I have sisters that have like at one time been a part of the church and now they're not. You know and. Um, just seeing that now, a lot of friends. I mean, shoot, this, as long as we've been doing it, we all know pastors who aren't even Christians anymore. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you talk about your church or friend from youth group. We're talking like, we. you're in this for five, seven, ten years. I know whole pastors who have walked away. Mm -hmm. And I think I think one of the things that I really agree with you in is that the sacraments do is even think of, like, the Eucharist is, and, and even think of the water. It's, it's, it's and I, I feel like I'm just restating what you're saying, yeah, is... Yeah is it's showing us what I think God always set out to do, which is to not have a blurred line between the physical and the spiritual. Totally. Like, I don't think, like, I mean, think about it. Creation, Genesis 1, he, the Spirit is hovering over the formless earth, and he's spe the very breath of God, the Spirit, the, the power of God is what shapes this. So it's like all this stuff is in some way like echoes of the breath of God, a spiritual thing manifested. And, and then... Um, and then light happens in Genesis, and, well, the sun doesn't get created for several more verses. Okay, so what is that? That's God. And I think it's I think so many Christians, when they have an over-spiritualization of their faith, mm -hmm. um, I don't even know if that's the right term, but when they have a disconnection between the spiritual and the physical realm, that's when I see most of the weird things happen. Yeah. It's so people who are preaching, praying for healing, but they're bad parents. It's people who, like, serve the church but don't enjoy their life. And I think that Christ is kind of like part of like the Eucharist, part of the communion is he's kind of like, hey, remember, it's all kind of, it's all here. It's it's here and you can't see it, but like it is, there there, there is a physicality, a, tan, a tangible nature to it that's important. A hundred percent. When you, when you, when you have a sacramental uh, theological framework, then you at least, even if you don't agree, you at least go, I understand iconography. Yeah. And why they would have icons, because the physical and the spiritual are not exclusive, but they yeah. are connected. Yeah. Again, I'm not saying I agree or disagree. I'm just saying you at least see the, the logic there. Yeah. Um, 
but it also rids us of like the Gnostic tendency mm -hmm. to go material is bad, spiritual is good. That's yeah. what sacramental theology does. But um, or like Piper's like Christian hedonism. Uh, my problem with it is like, what is this thing that he says? Like blah blah blah, perfect joy in Christ or something. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem is I'm go. What did God Christ is most glorified in us God, when, when I am most satisfied in him? Satisfied in him. Yeah. But I go. But what did God make? God designed Adam and Eve. God, God, Adam had purpose before the fall. Adam had a naked wife he had sex with, and I guarantee you it felt good. I guarantee you the male orgasm before the fall was better than what it is right now. I guarantee you the success rate. I guarantee you it was all. What God, I just, I, I, it really bothers me when, when on one hand we have like the prosperity gospel, who it's almost like so material and gross. But then, like, we have reformed people and, like, or, or even sometimes, like, super missions-based people who are just like, yeah, but, like, God just wants you to just worship and be sad. You and, have the poverty gospel. Yeah, poverty. The problem <laughs> and I'm like, well, do y'all have kids? And, like, is that how you want your kids to grow up? And I'm not saying my kids, like, sure, and, sure, and, and sure. I just, I feel like, I feel like that, the, the, the sacraments yeah. help us remember that they're, there is a relationship between the two that, that works together. How crazy is that Jesus, if, if he never became the incarnate son, I mean, he's always been the son, but if he, if he never became incarnate, he would never have a body. But for all of eternity, he will have a body forever because yeah. he came to earth, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. He's never, like, that's never shedding off of him. Yeah. He literally took on physical form forever when that yeah. happened. Which is insane. Can we go to, I want to come but, back to this. Can we go to a slight tangent? Yeah. Okay. So don't touch me yet. I have not ascended the Father. Do you believe he, it's, it's a body, but a different body than he had on earth? New body? Yeah. Yeah. A resurrected body. Yeah. Like what, but a body, just, just a straight it's human. It's a physical body. Physical body. The body with holes in his But hands. a resurrect, yes, I know, but a resurrected body that ascended to heaven, right? Yes. So he goes to the depths, takes the keys to hell, death, and graves, comes up, don't touch me, goes to heaven, comes back, goes goes through the whole wall, the disciples are there, now you can touch me, Thomas, all that stuff, right? Okay. Sure. Who did he say don't touch me to? I don't, I'm not familiar with this. Mary, he says, Mary, don't touch me, then he comes to Thomas, touch me. I don't okay. know if, if I said that right, saying that fast. Okay. But yeah, that's, that's what okay. scripture says. So it, sorry, we'll come back to baptism. No, no, you're fine, you're fine. So it's a resurrected body do you think there's some combination between heaven and the spiritual realm and a spiritual body with a physical human body or you think it's just straight human body well resurrected I, human body like describe this resurrected body well for one i mean i i can't to some extent yes but like give your your take uh well i mean the ultimate hope for the christian and this is somewhat semantics i'm not trying to be that guy who's like you know hang on particular words when we all know what we mean but it, it's the hope is not heaven it's the new heavens the new earth when yes. the heaven and earth come together yes. and the unseen realm and the seen realm are joined together and you know um we are transformed we get a new body it's glorious because it says we'll be immortal. like him we will be like him yeah but in terms of in terms of what would it i don't know what you Maybe clarify. I don't know what you mean by a spiritual and physical body. Well, I'm just saying. I, I'm not. I, I'm not even saying that. I'm just it, trying to describe. It is a like, physical body without sin. It's a physical body, though. That immortal. He's like Mary. Don't touch me yet. He goes to heaven. Why did he need to? Why couldn't she touch him at that time? He was like, I need to go to heaven first. I need to. So the way I, he went way, to heaven before yeah, Thomas I'm not touched following. him. So yeah, yeah. So like, if you if you track it, I'd have to pull up the. Are you talking the, about? Sorry, I'll let you finish. He's okay. So it's the it's the age old like Mel Gibson Passion the Christ two right like if okay. you've seen those interviews he wants to like do a Passion the Christ two yeah. and he wants to basically tell the story of what was happening while he while he was in the grave mm -hmm. so he he goes to he goes down paradise hell there's the 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 story of like Lazarus and the mm -hmm. sick what is it Lazarus and the rich man whatever it is. And Into the realm of the dead. Yeah. Yes, he yeah. goes, takes the keys, whatever, right. you know, metaphor, like, I have victory, whatever, releases yeah. them. Then there's what, and Mark, whatever, where, like, the spirits are going through the town, okay? So those, right. like, it's like that. I'm trying to connect it quick here. This That's, is what, okay, I'm tracking with you. Okay, so he resurrects now. Mm -hmm. He's like, Mary, don't touch me. Mm -hmm. I've, I, as I've, as I've studied it, I've seen it as then he takes those released people of paradise mm -hmm. in Abraham's bosom mm -hmm. up to heaven. Mm -hmm. Don't touch me. I'll be right back takes him up to heaven, and then he connects then no longer in the waiting period of paradise of mm -hmm. uh, the Old Testament people, but now 
you know, that what because that's why Jesus on the cross said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. Takes them now to heaven, connects mm -hmm. that. Then he comes back. Remember, it says that he goes through, I don't remember the exact timeline of this, but he goes through like through the wall, like walks like a ghost through the wall, he appears before the disciples, mm -hmm. remember? Mm -hmm. Thomas isn't there, and then Thomas is there, mm -hmm. and now he's like, touch me. Why mm -hmm. could Mary not touch him? And then, I just, where and is Thomas? That? Touch me. I've never read that. Is it in John? I pray I'm not misspeaking, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Yeah, I'm not remembering. I, Jesus could. But then, there, you know, there, there's another question that's similar to that. Well, we have scars on our body like Christ does. He said, okay, you know I mean? so he said it's in John. John 20, He said, do not hold on to me. Touch me not. For I have Jesus not yet ascended to the Father. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm saying it right. Don't touch, he, okay, but let, yeah. so let me, touch me not. So, the question, I, so my is, question is then, if wh why could Thomas touch him later? I believe it's because he had ascended, and now he came back. No, no, no. Well, he hasn't, he hasn't ascended to the Father. The way, I mean, the way I've always read it, and this is, I guess, maybe there's a question within a question. I've always read it as he, he came from heaven to earth and Mary's womb, born, lived 33 uh -huh. and a half yeah, years, yeah. died, tomb. He descends, yeah. right? He comes back up in that three days, comes out of the tomb. Mm -hmm. Mary, don't touch me. He ascends to take the captives, as Old Testament declares, I'm going to take the captives up. Uh, there's Old Testament scripture that says I would have that. to look at. I would have to. I, I could. I could be mis. So he. Has, I, 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 he don't, I don't think he ascends before he ascends. Yeah, and that's. I think the key would be he comes back and then he goes touch me and then obviously there's the ascension we know of. But what? So we find the taking. But what, So connect the dot for me. What? What happens when he ascends that he's not able to be touched? Is that where you're going? Yes, I'm. So what, I'm asked. Sorry, and so maybe we're looping around for no, no reason to answer no, the but, question. Or, but it's the same question as this: Why does Jesus have the scars? Does that mean that we're going to have the scars? You, you, you do have to be careful with some of these passages because it's not. It's not clear to me that they're an example of exactly how it's going to be a pattern for us. Like for I don't, sure, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I agree. So I just don't know. I'm just asking though. It's like, why? why and maybe, man, maybe depending on if he ascends, maybe that answers the question. But like, why at one point don't touch me yet? I don't have my resurrected body. So I, however, I, it, however, it I said mean it. that's. I mean, yes, and you're kind Tom, of inferring. And it then to Tom, it. and then with Thomas, it's like, wait, wait, well, touch you're, me. You're not suggesting he doesn't have a resurrected body. No, I'm said no. He is. Okay. He does. That's not what I'm saying. I, I'm just saying why at one point, if he didn't ascend, why would he say, Mary, don't touch me, Thomas, touch me? The only thing I see, Mary, don't touch me. One second, goes to heaven. Resurrected body comes back. Thomas, touch me, because now my body is different. I've now, I've now. But that doesn't make sense because he's touching the holes, so it's the same body. The thing that restores Thomas is. The but thing my that... body is the same body, but it's a, it's not just the human body. Uh, he, the road to Emmaus. He's walking with them. Yes, yes, yes. And they go. What, Luke twenty-four. Yeah, he's yeah. on the road to Emmaus, and they're like, "Whoa, that was Jesus." Right. Why? Because he isn't the same looking Jesus he was. For 33 and a half years. He, he's so, different well, okay, They yeah. didn't recognize him. So there's two, um, there's two Eden, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Illusions after Christ comes, comes out. Number one, when, they, when the ladies see Jesus, they think he's a gardener, which yes. Wright points out is an allusion to the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've never heard which, that, actually. And then um, secondly... If you look in the Greek Septuagint, when they're after the road of Emmaus, they're at the house and they eat the bread that's been broken. The Bible says that their eyes were open. It's the same exact line from Genesis 3 in the Greek Septuagint after they sinned. Their eyes were open. It's this cool parallel. Hmm. Their okay. eyes are open to their to sin and shame. It's cool. Really cool. Their it's really eyes cool. are open to who the Savior is. Um, but but my only point is. There's some there's some mystery there. I just don't have. I would say I would I would say this. I would say. Did he look like a gardener, or is this is this some? You know, I'm just saying. Were they like? Yeah. It couldn't be Jesus. It must be the gardener. But Jesus is dead. I think you know, it's like, clear that Jesus probably looked different. Yeah. So, but but he didn't look so different that they were like, no, <laughs> you're now six seven. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So there is something happening there. But yeah. And I I think maybe maybe something to 
to to lean into with this is that Mary said Rabbanai. She she recognized Jesus. She believed. It was so, after his voice, though, Mary. No, but what, yeah. Either way, what I'm saying is he was like, "You don't need to touch me. like, like you don't need to touch me because you believe." Mm. Whereas Thomas was doubting. Sure. And Jesus said, "Actually, no. Like, yeah, come that's closer." Possible, yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, a, a, again, it might be splitting hairs, but the, the difference to me is that Mary already believed. Okay, so here she it didn't is. need to touch. Ephesians 4, Paul writes, verses 8 to 10. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions, which we were talking about, right? Mm-hmm. He's in the tomb. He descends. And he who descended mm-hmm. is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fulfill the whole universe. That is the scripture when it says he took, he took many captives. That that's uh, that's what I was referring to, like the the but, the, the, the bodies, bodies that were in Abraham's bosom in paradise, yeah. the 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 those ones. But you're essentially asserting, you're I, suggesting, questioning, asking: Are there two ascensions? This is what I hear you saying. I believe I believe there was the ascension that everyone saw in Acts yeah. one, and I believe then he ascended with the captives after that. That with Paul that. is referencing an Old Testament scripture. in that moment, same moment or different moment. Mary, yeah. Uh, ascended. So, ba- yeah. okay, if you follow the follow the scriptures, the way I've taken it, he goes in. He, while he's in the tomb, he goes. Yeah. He sets the captives free. That's the scripture in Mark where the spirits are going through the town. Mm-hmm. He comes out. Is it a gardener? No, it's Jesus. Don't touch me, Mary. He then spirits. Whoosh, let's go. Takes the take ascends with them. But that doesn't follow for me. I, I, that's how I've read it. That's what I'm I asking. feel like you're. But the the ascension of Ephesians four is the ascension when he goes to the Father on high. That's that's when that's when the that's Everyone when the sees him. office gifts, if you will, are given to the church. So I I, I well, so taking take many captives. That's not referring. That's no. An old he's not arguing that. He's arguing. You're saying that there's two ascensions. I'm saying Ephesians four. I, there's is no clear moment. indication to me that he's referring to anything other than the Acts when chapter he one ascension. The Father. The Acts chapter one okay, ascension. Yeah. Where he's saying which I. Which I would agree too. I believe that there. I believe that there is definitely. He did some business in a physical, spiritual, for sure. death realm. That he, he, why did he not do that? The three days he was in the tomb. Do what? You were talking about the cap, setting the captives free. He, he did, did set them free, but the way I, the way, the way I read it, I think that I put it together is he set the captives free, and then there's a scripture about the spirits going through the town. But then I've always gotten stuck there. Mary, don't touch me. Yeah, I, I just have trouble connecting that to, to Thomas. Touch me. Yeah. Why? Well, sure, but what, what transpired? So, ge- uh, generally speaking, my hermeneutical methodology is I, I know you would agree with this too. I'm not saying you don't. Is to take what is clear to filter through what is unclear for versus sure. the other way. Yeah, and yeah, I know yeah, you're for not. Sure, for sure. This is not some major doctrinal issue. No, it's just a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would just go. I don't know. We'll put in the that's comments. That's a little unclear to me. But he- here's what I think is clear. So that's why I would just go. That's a fun theory. I don't see it. I can't get there with you, but. Yeah, I'm not a um, hundred on it. I've just it's it's interesting. I've just always always wondered with that. So we were talking about baptism. You well, want to go back? There yeah, I no? have a I have a <laughs> I, had, I have I had a verse. couple questions I want to bring. With I have that. a yeah. verse that I going off the last thing, um, going off the last thing that you talked about about yeah. the womb, that analogy yeah. and the new life. Yeah, I think that I agree with what you're saying. I think that's beautiful. I I, I however though I think it leaves out what I still think most of what we all leave out about baptism is that it also represents death. Like it's, it's us going down. I'm not saying you're purposely leaving that out. I'm just saying. I was just, I was just trying to go, here's how these two things are linked faith yeah. and baptism. Yeah. That they are not exclusive, but they're actually part of a similar process. And I was just trying to explain yeah. you are, you are a, you, when you put your faith in Christ, mm-hmm. you are a Christian. Yeah. They, this is what they believed about the catechumen before they're baptized. Yeah. But the climactic part of that journey, that, that's the only point yeah, I was trying yeah. to make there. Well, and, and yeah, and I, more than, I was just more using that as a jumping off pad of like, I, I think the missing piece to baptism is also we teach people that it represents death. It means in Romans yes. 6 that you referenced, it yes. talks about being baptized into the death of Christ. Yes. The death of the old person. I no person. longer live, but Christ lives And I think me. that's yeah. what we miss in pastoring people. Is you're, we, you're saying that you you agree that it's important and true. It is not it is not only birth, like he's saying, but it is death. That's I'm saying it's a missing piece. I, I think that's why... There think, is no birth without the death. I agree. And I think that we what we do is we go, you prayed that prayer, sign up, here's a t-shirt, boom, woohoo, 
here's your photo. Yeah. yeah okay, I want to talk but, about. But we need to. That's what I, I want to talk I about. I think we need to sit down with people. Yeah. I don't know if it has to be one on one. I'm not saying that. That'd be hard to do practically, right? I don't know that we should just write something off as important as eternal salvation, and you know, and and someone's meant like this beautiful moment of 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 salvation and celebration as being too unimportant to create some kind of one-on-one -on -one system to do. But certainly in a class, I think you need to walk people through. Yeah. Just so you know, this does not mean you're going to be perfect. It does not mean, you know, but I think sometimes we qualify too much. It doesn't mean you're not going to go to the bar sometime. It doesn't mean you're going to cuss. I go, but why do we do that so much? Why don't we take the opportunity while someone is apparently making a radical decision to change yeah. their everything to say, hey, when you go down into this water, you know what part of this means? It means next time on a Friday night, you want to open up Tinder. You want to, you know, search that thing. Next time you want to, whatever the thing yeah. is, you know, you want to you you hate your brother. Can you imagine you're about to get married, you know, like literally it's your yeah. wedding day. And, you know, John just invited himself to my wedding and yeah. all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, why the, Good call back. why the, do I have a blank? No. Um, and could you imagine if, like, you know, the pastor is about to marry you? For me, it was, you know, my dad, and, and my dad's like, "Listen, this is about this is the biggest commitment you're about to make. Other than what you think about Jesus, this is the second biggest commitment of your life." Yeah. Like, yeah. He's like, "Doesn't mean you're not gonna cheat." Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, "Okay, this is well, weird." Is it, but is it First Peter that says he's given you everything, blah 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 blah, to build and, live and a I, holy and life? And I just like, wonder. Like, I just like, meaning you don't have to sin anymore. You 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 can overcome. And I just it wonder what the church would look like if what people's faith would look like, our volunteer teams could look like, if we were just a little bit more upfront to say, hey, guess what you get? Guess what gets to happen when you go in that water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something's going to happen. You're, you're saying it's dead now. Well, like, I, I don't just have new life in Jesus. I'm saying my old life, and in, in the power of counting the costs, is going, what is a part of my old life like, imagine that. What, what if there's like a new, like a baptism little journal church has had, right? Because we have all of our tools and guest experience things, which are all great. What if we had one that was like, write down five elements of your old life that are going under that aren't coming back up? Oh my gosh, put this on your mirror. We're going to send you a Polaroid of your baptism yeah. moment that you're going to tape next to that. So you remember that, that, that next time, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I just think that, that that would be so powerful for people. Even if we remove, right? I'm okay, honestly. There's a part of me that's like, I won't, I don't need to die on the hill that someone's not saved or half saved that they don't do the water thing. But I will die on the hill that baptism is is a it, we are not utilizing it in in the terms of discipleship and a longevity of following Jesus like we could because we're making it too much of a, a thoughtless process. So here's the other day why we started having this conversation. Here's mm -hmm. why we're having it now. Is um like what one, one of my good friends who's on staff with us, his his name is Tyler Kreiner. He's Honestly, I think an amazing theologian, like diving into scripture, he knows it way better than me in terms of like, even like you and a lot of the, you guys and stuff like that. Like I, I can learn a lot from the, the way you know how to just really unearth, I guess, the origin of what was being said versus along the way, we're in the world, but not of the world, how things just slowly mm. over time. It's not that it's a hundred percent inaccurate. It's just sure. been tweaked a little bit over time. Yeah, yeah. And so as I was having this conversation with him, it, he, he was burdened by it. He was just like, I don't feel like we're setting people up to win when we baptize them. And I, I want to bring together the birth and the death and in and, and, and my context, what I'm going through right now with our church. And this is what I see with the capital C church, maybe not every church, but with a lot of them because of social media, because of a lot of different avenues and things and backdrops and cameras as we have and all these things that at one time didn't exist when people were getting baptized. Right. Even now I can see in my own, in my own facility, I can see really cool baptism pictures and I'm there and I'm like, mm -hmm. somebody's coming out of the water right there. And it's great. And the water's dripping off and it's a sick picture. And I love seeing that. And it like mm -hmm. gives me some, but I really think we've made baptism about that picture and not about what actually transpired. And that's what, that's what I think mm. has burdened me with this is like, yeah. we even teach people. Well, uh, tease it out for me. Are you talking we about, teach, it's more that people, it's more about an churches, experience, experience. Churches have made it about it's a, a almost, great moment during worship and a great oh, picture okay. and a shout from the room. Sure. And it's really more about I misunderstood what you the, were, the okay. celebration of that the service moment. Order. Yeah. Yes. Then the transformation. Yeah. Like, like really what, the way we should do it is you have, you get, we give people two pictures after they've been baptized. A picture from who they were before they got That's baptized, good. 
in a picture on the it, day they got baptized like, I, I to don't, show them you're different and, now. And this is me being really just kind of like pulling back the the veil even with what we do. When I coach people, like when you come out of the water, take a second, celebrate, shout, lift your hands. We're going to take a picture of it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that we've put more priority on though that picture and that moment of what's being captured than what's being changed within somebody to really help them understand. So we do it. We do a, a, a discipleship course. We teach on. We te- teach deep on baptism, which is the reason we're having this conversation internally with mm-hmm. our staff because we want to take this even a step further. I, honestly, I will probably have when this releases start with saying to uh, like our team, watch this podcast. Let's now together as a team, search the scriptures. I think this podcast is going to be a resource for us now with you guys' thoughts. So now there's anybody from that church you want to donate to the, my ministry, <laughs> uh, I'll put my cash app down below. But, but anyone but, from no, that church, keep, I love keep you. Going, keep going. But, no, my point is, though, like take this, have conversations, look at scripture, rewrite our curriculum, retrain our teachers. And then from there, when we teach people, really help them understand like even the whole polaroid photo before and after kind of concept you know like i was thinking about when was paul baptized and you think about how he's blind for three days jesus was in the tomb for three days the correlation of that three Mm -hmm. days jonah and the whale for three days Mm -hmm. he's blind finally ananias placed his hand on him and when it says it felt like scales from his eyes that was a reference to um like uh how snakes when they shed mm-hmm. their skin yeah. they had scales like very thin like scales in their eyelids that would fall off with the shedding of the skin mm-hmm. so when it says it's like scale that fell from his eyes it was now at that point the beginning of a new skin yeah which was it says he was filled with the uh at some point he's filled with the holy spirit because later he says i speak in tongues yeah. more than you and you can see the evidence and the gifts of the holy spirit in him uh we also know he was water baptized and then mm-hmm. he's and he goes he was on his way to Damascus to kill people. He starts and preaching boldly. He starts preaching. Yeah. So there's been a, not just a celebration of yeah. his life in Jesus, but a complete transformation in him with Jesus. My point is, yeah. now Galatians 2 you referenced, referencing to you with the death, mm-hmm. he, that's where he says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer yeah. I live, but Christ that lives in me. You know that yeah. scripture. I, I really think that analogy of birth, like you mm-hmm. talked about, and then death, yeah. These ingredients, they are essential. Yeah. Like honestly, as we're having this conversation, like the Holy Spirit is like literally just convicting me of years of not equipping people well enough. Yeah. Cause I've said that before, like, eh, eh, you know what? It's okay. God has grace. He loves you. He forgives you, which is true if yeah. you've sent. And we'll be there to help you, which yeah. is true. Yeah. Yeah. But it's almost like you just said, I'm equipping you to have an affair as you start your marriage. Like yeah. I'm I want you to recognize like you are dying and you are being reborn. And I know we say these things, but we don't help them in this moment. That's why we have like premarital counseling at our church. Yes. Is because it's like, hey, just so you know, you're about to have a pretty big commitment. Like this is going to be huge. So don't, it's the best thing ever, but don't jump in unless you're actually going to be loyal, committed. Your allegiance is going to be to this person. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, there's always the debate of like, do you baptize right away like they did in the early church? Do you wait some time? And, um, you know, I tend to think, of course, we want to baptize people as early as possible, for sure. But if people yeah. don't understand what they are committing to, it'd yeah. be like if an 18-year-old came up to me and goes, can I get married? I'm not going to say you absolutely shouldn't. Maybe he should. But I want to sit down and go, do you know what you're doing? Yeah. yeah. This is pretty big deal, buddy. Yeah. And, of course, you're not going to be perfect. We can all agree on that. Yeah. None of us have been here. Yeah. You, you vowing to your wife doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. You're just vowing that you're going to be loyal to her. And that's what God's after in your life. He is not after you saying, I am baptized, I will never sin. Yes. He's after you saying, I have I have died, I will not worship any other gods other than Jesus Christ. It's a good word. Yeah. So that's what he's after. I and love then, that word, know, loyalty. I love yeah. that word. Because loyalty that is comes saying... from Heiser. He calls it believing loyalty. That's what yeah. faith is in the Old Testament. Matthew Bates yeah. calls it allegiance. Because it's even like, yeah. if I screw up, it's okay. I'm still loyal to you. I'm still it's going forward. I'm still... We sometimes talk about salvation. It's like, yeah. it's grace and faith. And what's faith? You just got to trust in the finished work of Jesus. Uh, if you look... If, well, okay, I don't want to open up another can of worms. <laughs> you were going to say something, John, because uh, listen, I could go off on. Okay, go ahead. Well, no, I just, I just, I think, I think we all, the, those of us that have done that, we all have done it from a really 
well-meaning place of not wanting 100%. to make it more difficult than anyone to come to Christ. Which is yeah. I just true. think when you look at so many churches, I think anyone who's been to ministry in America, especially in an evangelical setting, but I would say it probably anyone, we all can think of as many people who have walked away, if not more, than who are coming to faith. And I that we know that's going to be part of it, right? We know that there's Jesus, Jesus is up front, the goats and the sheep, and depart, me, depart from me for I never knew you. We know that people are going to walk away, but I just, the longer I do this, the more I'm just, I, st- I think it's my job as a shepherd to say, are there things we could do that would actually make it better? And, and Jesus, Jesus, it made me, as you guys were talking, made me think of the rich young ruler. You know, we always talk about that verse being about the money, like about rich people. And yes, Jesus did say it's, hard, it's, it's easier for a rich man, to, uh, or it's easier for the, the, a camel to enter the eye of the needle than a rich man to get into heaven. So I do think that there is a commentary, of course, about just money and earthly possessions making it sometimes right. harder. But I, I think what also is happening there is Jesus loving someone enough, like that 18-year-old you said, to be, you're not ready, dude. Yeah. You know, or like what was the Pharisee? Was it Nicodemus that he said, uh, that said, I want to follow you? And he says, foxes, um, like birds have uh, yeah, nests yeah. and foxes yep. have holes. Yep. The Son of Man has no place to right. rest his head. Hey, just Get warn you, buddy. Yeah. Well, he, he didn't yeah. just say, warn you. He said, no. Totally, yeah. No. Yeah. And I'm not, I, I know it would just, would just wreck our American church mind to think that, but we're not saying no. Jesus wasn't saying no. He's saying not now. He's not saying never. He's saying, dude, this isn't real. Well, Jesus is not going to be added as another idol on the list of all the other idols we have. And, and I, it's one and only. Just imagine, you know I mean? imagine if we were pastoring people in a way. Uh, I'm not even. I'm not saying you should get up there and preach. See, this is the other thing too. I think we 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 um, we have a bad methodology of what things are preached from the pulpit and which things are done in a pastoral setting. And I think that some of why. What do you mean? Like. Like, we don't talk about this publicly. We only talk about this privately. Well, I mean it both ways. I think there are things that we should be talking about on the on the stage that we're not. And, but yet, at the same time, I think there are some times that pastors get up there and they're, they avail themselves of topics and tones in, in something that should be personal. For instance, like, I don't think that a pastor should get up on stage and be like, yeah, man, I know a bunch of y'all, y'all prayed that prayer, and man, a bunch of fake Christians in my church. Like, we see that there are preachers that talk like that, really just harsh and just, in, like, almost like just, just, just shame, judge, like, judgment in the wrong way you know like i'm not saying that pastors all of a sudden need to get up there and be like your altar call you're closing out service and you're being like normally i'd pray a salvation prayer but i've noticed recently that most of you don't even take this seriously anyway so just well, don't even bother no i'm not saying well, on that's stage. just someone though who's like emotionally immature like that that's... but there's a lot of people like there's a lot so many of the most staunchly conservative people who would consider themselves staunchly conservative theologians are just like really angry men who don't know how to relate to people and who and who I don't but that's believe. That's like the spiritual and the physical that you're talking about. Like that's yeah. like, that's meaning that the point. So, you're so just getting. You're not advocating for us about. going the other direction and making. It, no, yeah. But what what, I, what yeah. I am saying is imagine imagine a local pastor imagine a leadership structure where hey you see that Timmy raised his hand during service, yeah what you know Timmy better than me, like go go talk to him. He wants to get baptized now. Go 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 talk to him. Hey Timmy, what are you what's going on, man? Like I remember when you were in sixth grade, Timmy. Like you. You pray this prayer before the next night. You didn't come back to church for a year. We didn't see you till the next summer camp. Tell me what's going on yeah, in your yeah, life yeah. right now. Oh, man, I just got this new girlfriend, and, you know, yeah. I know we're to date her. And you go, hey, Timmy, I, I love you, man. I love you. Um, I'm, I'm just going to can – I, can I be honest with you, Timmy? I feel like we know each other well enough, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you're really barking up the right tree when it comes – I don't know that, I don't know that you, you're really in this for Jesus. What, what would you think about that? Hey, before before we get baptized, would you be willing to get coffee with me for a couple of weeks? Did you talk about the Bible? Let me take that a step further. This was the conversation I was telling you, me and Tyler were having that started this whole thing for me about baptism. There's a, a young person that literally my son, I just told him this morning, had a dream about last night that they were saying the reason that they're not in church, because we've been like faithfully connected, like reaching out, going to things they're at, all that kind of stuff. And had a dream last night where basically this specific thing that they're part of is over now, which was their excuse why they couldn't be involved in church. Mm-hmm. Well, and in the dream, I, my son was like, well, now that this is done, are you going to come back to church now? My, and so my son has literally been, he's five years old, been praying for this, mm. this specific person. We were having a conversation about that person, and, and my, my friend Tyler, he goes, I feel like we need to call him up and remind him, you have been baptized. 
-hmm. into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Like you made a decision. Like before, it's like when people left, we've been like, hey, we'd love to see you. We'd love to have you back. No, like, no, it's like, it's Well, think about how powerful this is too. If, if, if the emphasis is not just in baptism, this is what I declare, but, but the emphasis is, this is what God has actually declared of you. Yeah. Imagine how powerful this is to say this. Hey, dude, I know you've walked away, but you've been baptized. And he could, he could, this person could go, yeah, I know I said that, but For sure. I didn't mean it. But God but, meant it. Yeah. But what if you said, this is what God said about you, and you agreed to it. Oh, yeah, I love that. You know what I mean? It's I just, think that's also powerful. when it says we've been baptized into one body, it's like, it's not about just you anymore. Yeah, totally. It's, it's about us. Yeah, absolutely. It's like yeah. we are the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it is something of like, when he said that, like hitting him up, and like, you were baptized into a body with me, bro. Yeah. Okay, let me just so You ask, can't just walk away. That just reminded me, you asked, you met, you put this out there earlier, and if everybody agrees on this, we don't need to stay on this, but um, you brought up the subject of being baptized again. Do you believe people should be rebaptized? I no, because I think it's like I think it's like um, th this is the and the reason I ask is because me and Tyler were having this conversation too. It's this idea of like you don't get remarried to the same person while you're still married, but you renew your wedding vows. But then there is this instance. There was this person in our church before they went to the Lord, where they got married young as a couple. They separated for like 20 years, came mm -hmm. back and got married again. So they did get remarried to the same person. And that, that became a conversation piece for us. Renewing the vows is when is, you re is receiving the Eucharist. Okay. So the, what about this? And, you and, see, in and, this and, illustration, that's how Yes. And an analogy, though, these people were married. They mm -hmm. literally separated for 20 years. And yeah, they got but, married again. But what we're doing is we're, the problem is we're taking the illustration and expanding it to its limits, going... Does this illustration still work? But, but I'm asking, though, you, they live for, say, you gave your life to Jesus at 16 years old. You go and you literally, for 10, 15 years, turn away. You're you're living your life not for the Lord at all. Meaning you got baptized, live for the Lord at 16. Mm -hmm. you completely turn away. You come back, let's say, at 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Do you now get baptized and say, Lord, I am recommitting. I'm back. I'm baptized in the faith. I'm not leaving. And then you live for the Lord the rest of your life. Like, I'm just creating D scenarios. Did Israel have to recircumcise their children? Okay. Okay. But, no, they didn't. No. But okay. But I. If I tend to. About infant I tend to. didn't take no. it seriously at sixteen. Let's say they didn't. So at thirty, is it, it like? It doesn't matter because in marriage, God says over them that they become one flesh. Yes, but this, but this is bringing up a a greater point in terms of how the church in America relates to the sacraments. The only reason why it would occur as baptism being the thing they should redo is because. I think most churches have a very loose relationship with communion, meaning yeah. it's they pass a cup, we did a thing, blah, blah, blah. But if but if if we imagine the imagine the tension of the Passover table, the emotion, John's crying, Judas is freaking out, Peter's got a sword probably hidden under. It's just like and Jesus is like, hey y'all, I've been telling you, let me show you. Boom, you see this. I've been telling you that I'm going to die, and I'm, I'm, I'm showing you right now this is what's going to happen. No, 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 no. Yeah, see this, this wine, my blood. It's about to be poured out. It's, the time is here. Please make sure that after everything I'm about to go through, you do this so you can be re-embodied, reconnected, reassociated mm -hmm. with just what this means. And I'm, I, most of my life, I have not had a relationship with communion like that. And so I would, I, would, I would actually tend to agree that if we had a healthier, more robust application of, of, the, of, of communion, of the Eucharist, that would actually be the moment where we'd sit this young man down and we'd have a cup and we'd have a bread and we'd say, hey, you've walked away. That's and interesting. That's, that's but I'm, wow. But this, that's, is, but, I'm, but this is happening real time for me. I, yeah, I want you to know, like I'm, I'm being... Him saying that convicted I'm, me. That's what I'm telling you. These are things I've been yeah, wrestling yeah, totally. with where I've been, I gave my life to Jesus at four years old. Yeah. And I've sinned, but I've never, ever like walked away and said, I'm like, I've never been one of those people. Yeah. I've been one of the, it's been worse. I've been like here and been like secret sinning in high school he and things like that, lot. right? I know. Yeah, I can tell. I did, yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying like, I've always wanted to live for Jesus. I've always loved yeah. God's word. I've always loved the church. But as I'm going through some of this, I'm just like, the generation that we're leading right now mm -hmm. is tricky. Mm -hmm. 
and the reason it's tricky is people are people in the end, but social media has made it to where there are yeah. so many opinions, so many different teachings, so many perspectives and viewpoints and things out there. What is the truth anymore? Like, what is the depth of what God's word means? There's so many preachers saying so many different things. Yeah. Yep. That I'm here now and I'm just like, you know what, Lord, like, I don't want to preach like this person because they get a lot of views, or I don't want to just approach what's easy. I want to, I would rather have a Gideon's type of army. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel blessed with the amount of people in our church and what God's doing and like all that. But like, I would rather have a faithful few mm -hmm. that really get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's where I'm at. I, I, I'm just so, wrestling with these things for that reason. Um, are you guys familiar with who Scott Hahn is? I'm not, no. Okay, I know so Han Solo, but not Scott Han. <laughs> he so shot dumb. first. So dumb. Um, yeah, Greedo Scott, totally shot first. <laughs> Scott Han is a, he was an evangelical pastor back in the day. He came home to Rome, as they say. Um, he became a Catholic. And he has this really interesting um, thought on the Eucharist and when Jesus says, it is finished. I never heard of this before until I read his book. He says this. He says, um, when Jesus says it is finished, it's right after he takes the sour wine. And when Jesus was in the garden and is sweating blood, he is asking the Father, take this cup from me. Mm. And Ooh. he says that at Yom Kippur, they would drink four different um, different glasses of wine over, over, over the celebration. And they, were, they represented different things. There was the cup of blessing, and, and the fourth one was the cup of, I think it was the cup of atonement, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. And Scott Hahn says that when Jesus Christ is on the cross and he's fed the last, because if you remember at the Lord's Supper, he says, I will not drink of the vine again. And it's not, he doesn't drink of the vine again until he is on the cross. And then it's the, it's the great over it's the great parallel between the Passover that really points to Christ, and then he takes the fourth cup. In other words, the atonement for the world for those who would believe in Christ Jesus is now accessible after he drinks the fourth cup, which is the sour wine that they offer him on the cross. That is when. It is completed. Anyways. So first cup it's, it's is at the communion table. Second I, here, cup is Gethsemane. Third cup is sour wine. What's the... I, I can't... I can't, I can't... Yeah, no, I know. I yeah, can't I remember. Yeah. But... Um, Very... That's I a could, really cool... I could Very, find it. Never heard um, of that before. But again, I think some of this... I think Anyways, what that we, was just interesting. What so. we have to understand... Very interesting. And what, what I love, what I love though, you said earlier, that points back to the baptism thing, don't forget your thought, Yeah. is the whole should they be rebaptized re thing. I love that thought. I'm literally going to call this person today that we're talking about at the time that we're recording this. I'm going to call them. Remember how we talked like my, my dad cries and your dad cries mm -hmm. and it makes me cry. I want to cry. Yeah. Cause I love, I love this person. Like I've been praying for their soul. They're mm -hmm. not living for the Lord. And when my son had this dream last night, it just rocked me. And so the question is, let's say, do they walk away? So your son's do, age, by the way, five. Yeah, he's five. I, yeah. I said that. Oh, okay. Um, but do, if they walked away, do they get rebaptized? I love this thought I've never had this to sit down and be like, let's have communion. Let's renew your vows to the Lord. Let's remember what he's done. You've already been baptized yeah. into the faith. Let's like, let's drink of the four cups kind of concept. Like let's sit and that's why Luther called it communion and why they, they did not call the front. Um, they replaced what was an altar at the front of the churches with a table because at an altar, you lay something down as a sacrifice, which is a place for that. But at a table, you come and you eat and you receive something. And this is the Lord's table. It's not your you're table. Like come into union. You're saying like, do yes. we sit and come into this right, together? Right. So, so when, we, when we come to the Lord's table, we're not coming to bring something. That's actually where you come to receive something. You know, it's funny because it's like, we'll be, we kind of point the fingers and we're like, we have passionate worship and we really go after the Holy Spirit. Now, listen, I do believe that. I do believe it is, that is one of our strengths as evangelicals and Pentecostals and whatever. But, you know, this is the moment where they have fellowship with Christ. This is what Paul says. He says, when you take of the cup of blessing, you partake or you fellowship with Christ Jesus. That is insanity. He doesn't say that about anything else that I'm aware of. It is yeah. this reverent, amazing, 
mystical thing. I mean, this is what sacrament means. It's a sacred mystery. Mm. I don't know how I fellowship with Christ, but I know that as I eat this and I drink this, I am literally having an encounter with Christ Jesus via the Holy Spirit right now. I feel like in modern day Christianity, we set, we, we focus our attention on just, you know, we're a worshiping church. Mm -hmm. We're a praying church. We're a serving church. We're yeah. a give, and we like choose our, our, our favorite or the thing we're best at or whatever. But if you look at the church being built in the book of Acts from ground zero, they worshiped, yes. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and they broke bread, and they... Serve the poor. They, ser like, they, they did it the all. They did all of it. It was the sacraments. It was a move yeah. of the Holy Spirit. It was, it was all of it. And I think we have lost things like the teaching on the sacraments. We've lost things like a really establishing, as we've talked majority of the time, what does baptism mean? Because yeah. what, what, what are we doing? Are we picking our yeah. favorite? Are we picking what we're most gifted in or something? Yeah. Like, what is this exactly? So I think I, I, for me, like, I'm actually really burdened by this because if my thought is like at the origin of the church, if they had it all, why can't we have it all? I, why should we be any different? Same Jesus, same at spirit. At the same time, I, would, I, I, would, I agree with everything you said. This is not, this is not in opposition. This would just be my caveat. I would go, absolutely. And at the same time, um, I want to be careful not to put the early church too much on a pedestal where it's like, because people can can read the book of Acts as everything is prescriptive instead of not realizing that a lot of it is descriptive. It's like, oh, well, we need to be in houses. It's like, For well, sure. Right. Yeah, I'm not, I, I, I know no, that's not no, what you're I know going. what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But, you know. We need but, to give all of our possessions. But I, but yeah. I, at the same time, I agree with what you said. A hundred percent. I agree with what you said. No, and, I, and, I, I agree that. And that I think, too. I just think, like, I imagine we're coming to the close of this. It's a good conversation. I mean, I mean, it just depends if somebody lights a fire or somebody else or something they're about to no, say. I, feel I mean, like, I, feel I like was going to, but I was like, yeah. I don't know how long this podcast I, I is, so like, I'm not going to ask I this. I feel like this is <laughs> it just, just it depends just on asking, when you want to eat lunch. Asking <laughs> our, I think just landing the plane, I think we should, because I think that this should serve as a, I think the way that Dave is going to use it, I want to use it for like my team. And I just think this is a good thing. I hope this is a resource to not only Christians, but, but church leaders and I think it's a good conversation. I don't think we feel like we have it figured out, but I think this is a healthy conversation. Um, and I, I think, though, whenever something is not so, we have to ask, why not? And why, why are these things we're talking about? Why did they get the way that they are? And I think we underestimate how in the American church, how anti-Catholic, you know, pro-Protestant, anti-history we can be. I don't even think we mean to be. I just think that like Protestant Americans are like, I, we're like, there's no world before that. Where are you yeah, from? Yeah, I'm yeah. from Michigan. No, you're not. Your family, hundreds of years ago. I'm but, German. My family, they, they were Nazis at a mission to take out the Statue of Liberty. There we go. Editor, please bleep that out. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but I just think, I just think that the, we are so Protestant that we that we out of fear from somehow going back to to the negative elements of of Catholicism, yeah. we yeah. just throw the baby out with the bathwater. I'd, I'd say that for me personally, mm -hmm. I was so just. I love Jesus. I'm mm -hmm. doing well. Don't add anything. Don't change anything because I know what I'm doing now at this point, and I can live for the Lord. And mm -hmm. the longer I live for Him, mm -hmm. and the more I know the more I recognize I don't know. And I think for me, really what you're talking about is I'm now looking at Catholicism. I'm now looking at even denominations yeah. within Protestantism. I'm going on, okay, what are the things I can learn? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what are the things that help me fall more in love with Jesus rather yeah. than like, oh, I know how to do this now. And I also don't think that the way that the Holy Spirit moves, I don't think God in heaven is like, these guys really messed it up with the Jesus movement. Communion was so weak during the Jesus, you know, movement. I I think what's happening now is just, I think the Holy Spirit. There's just there's times where the church gets really there's em, th different emphases, and I don't necessarily yeah. think that there's supposed to be this perfect. We're supposed to look in the past and be like, oh my gosh, are you really saved? Are you really saved? Oh my, have you been doing ministry wrong for the last thirty years? Ah! Right, right, right. I think it's instead the humility of going, okay, what do we sense the Lord is doing right now? What do we sense we might be missing? What do we humbly just saying, what, what could we learn from other churches 
maybe from history, from the early church, from yeah. churches in the 1800s. Man, are we missing anything? I think there's, yeah. and I and I think that like I don't think that God is just up there being like, because what what oh you're doing it wrong. I don't know if know? this is a hundred percent accurate to say, but I feel like this is the kind of podcast where you can say whatever you want, and we'll keep and the other, YouTube comments will sort you keep out. Keep each other accountable. Yeah, totally. I would say this though: if you're somebody listening right now that you think you know, you don't. Like, and I'm saying that from a place of my own personal. Expand journey. what you mean by that. My own personal journey. I've just thought. Where's the bathroom? Right out, right the, out door. the door. You'll see. It's right in front. I've just thought it was so clear and so simple. Yeah. And I was like, I know. Yeah. And, and I'm just going to like throw. I'm not saying specifically this is what I thought, but I'm just yeah. going to throw out some like examples here. Lutherans, you guys don't got it right. Methodists, no, no, no. That ain't right. John. John, it's right there. That door right there. Stop right there. Dear Gus, you can't take this guy anywhere. Catholics. Y'all are wrong. Yeah. Um, Episcopalians. You're say, oh, this is what you're saying to each tradition. I'm not thing. literally saying I've thought, though. I'm just giving, I'm you just know, throwing out names. Like, y'all don't have it, right? Let me tell you. And the more that I study scripture, which makes me then have to go look into how people do things because, oh, that's kind of like what they did in here. Mm-hmm. Oh, and this kind of reminds me of Catholicism a little bit. Like even as simple as this, Acts 15, when they had the Jerusalem Council. Mm -hmm. What does that sound kind of like? The Vatican. Mm. It's like the same con... I'm I'm not literally, I'm just saying it's the same concept. Where they had a, they had a, 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 a Mecca of sorts, a hub. They had a you know, the Vatican was like, is the hub of like, well, for Catholicism, right? It's like, or like the AG, the General Council of the Assemblies of God in Missouri. Like, yeah. ex- I'm just saying, sure. I'm not there, saying anyone, I'm just saying the I, more I, I, I know, the more I don't know. There, uh, I can't remember if it was Henry Nowen or who it was, but there was this Catholic priest who said to study church history is to become more Catholic. Hmm. But I would say um, to study church history is to become for Protestants, more Catholic and Catholics to become more Protestant and the evangelicals to become, you know, more um, uh, Pentecostal and I sacramental. Th- th- uh, yeah, I just so um, well, there was this old pastor who said this. He said he said that all, the, you know, the, the Oriental, the Eastern Orthodox, the Roman Catholic, the Jes- the Jesuit, you know, um, the Lutheran, the Methodist. The, he the, said they the are desert all, father and mothers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all the twelve tribes of Israel, all thinking they're twelve. They're all they're all true Israel. Mm. And the faster we can realize yeah. that we're all actually part of yeah. one larger covenant, and that we can learn from each other, we can learn from each other. The better. Can I just read one quick quote off can, of that? Super quick though. For me, it's not it's not about jumping no, ships. Yes, yes. For me, it's about pulling it in uh, yes. because I can't, I can't lose what I've experienced yeah. in Pentecostalism in terms of a move of the Holy Spirit yeah. and a charismatic flow. But what I'm doing is like, Ooh, I see. Let me, yeah. let me, I love this quote so much. And this is so weird. I pulled up my Kindle app for this book I had read a long time ago and every highlight is gone. I don't know why that is. That's the same. That's the move of the devil. You've only been baptized once. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Every generation of believers face the risk of becoming a prisoner to their own myopic vision of the Christian faith, assuming that how it understands and practices faith today is always the best. C.S. Lewis cited that this problem as a reason for reading old books. None of us, he wrote, can fully escape the blindness, this blindness, but we shall certainly increase it, and we can weaken our guard against it if we read only modern books. For modern books, as well as the ideas and practices they convey, only tell us what we already know, and they reinforce our blind spots and our prejudice. The only, uh, the only pivotal way to keep the sea breeze of the centuries blowing through our minds, and this can be done only by reading old books. Of course, people from the past did not see everything right. People were no clever than they are now. They made many mistakes as we have, but now, but not the same mistakes. Their successes can teach us. Their failures will warn us. Two heads are better than one, not because either is infallible, but because they are unlikely to go wrong in the same direction. Sheesh. And I think it's like um, it's really good. when somebody goes, Jesus Christ isn't God. I just go, trust me, you are not smarter than Augustine. So true. And 
I, I guarantee you that um, every question you have an answer to has already been answered better than I could ever do it. I'm not saying on everything. It's not even but answered. Also, it's already been asked. It's already been asked. That's what people don't realize. It's already, it's already it's been, been asked. But, but it's, all, it's been written about. And again, it's not saying that it's not saying that Augustine, Augustine, you know, it's not saying he's infallible. It's not but saying it's saying any that battle has already been fought. Yes. And um, anyways. But I still think it's worth fighting. It I still is think worth it's worth fighting. fighting. I'm just saying we can learn yeah. from that. We should right? ask yeah. the questions yeah. of why are if we're not we willing if we're it. not willing to go and learn and read and yes. look at what they've already asked, yeah. why are we sitting here pretending yeah, like we're asking yeah. for the first time? Could you yeah. imagine it, you know, your 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 family has a massive property and you're like, I want to go put plumbing over there because of this idea I have. And you don't check to see if they've ever done groundwork there. And yeah. you start building yeah. and you realize, oh wait, that's they've the already point. done plumbing. Yeah, that's the point. Okay, so my you know why did they put plumbing here? What was their thought? And you, I mean, that's you know that's all yeah. I'm saying. Well, and I think even like with with that, um, a, a real practical thing people should research is like the gunpowder revolt. Like in 1605, like we 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 herald Luther and the 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 Protestant Reformation as the evil overthrowing of like the evil big bad Catholics, which it's just so much more my turn. Yeah. I gotta go. And and. And there was, of course, there was a lot of really evil things. Thank God. Yeah, I hate him. Well, just I told you he's the worst. He I told you not to bring seat. him. I know. Okay. Put him in place of power. But but I I think is is what they don't understand or what I didn't understand. What I learned, I learned from HBO because looking through HBO Max, and I was like, oh, Jon Snow is on a show. Cool. Called Gunpowder Revolt. I did not. I was not aware that that the Protestants persecuted Catholics. In England, for like over a hundred years, like it's taking their land, killing them, like person, that, that this beautiful move of like the Reformation, the Ang- the Anglican Church, turned yeah, turned into turned into another form of abuse and another form of something that needed to be you know over- overthrown, and that some of the you know r- religious persecution that we read about when it comes to people coming to America was at the hands of Protestants, and and I think that's a great example of how we should never get so anti one historical movement Catholics and never so pro like we almost have to check our biases. And it's not to say that it's not to say that we subscribe to everything that the Roman Catholic Church or whatever tradition. Yeah. Or whatever Protestant line that we yeah. subscribe to everything. Yeah. I could give you a hundred reasons why I disagree with with, yeah. with Rome. Yeah. But yeah. that doesn't mean there's not a hundred things I couldn't learn from them. Exactly. And just and, and me saying that that just because that eventually elements of the Protestant movement uh, 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 showed itself through the lens of like murder and stealing and, and like violent like persecution of the Catholics. That doesn't mean that I think Luther was wrong and everything. I just think I think it's more embracing There's the blood fact on everybody's hands. Yeah, and embracing the fact that that we shouldn't completely write off one part of church history or, or the other, and that at the end of the day. We can all come to Christ from whatever avenue, yeah. even if it's other religions, yeah. and, and even if it's crystals yeah. and zodiac signs. And- what? <laughs> I was, yeah, I, I, I didn't know where you were going, and I was like, okay. I was letting you finish, thinking you had like a payoff, but. Well, he's Snapchatting somebody right now. I don't know what he's no, doing. No, it's I'm my. Just it's kidding. my. It's you my heard team. my kidding. It's, you it's heard my, my message team. about Snapchat last night. Here, can I send a selfie? Sure. Is that okay? Do you, I don't know. Some my, get, my team is like, let's see with, what you're up to. With no, with no. Just let <laughs> or actually, let's go this way. Actually, let's go black and white. Just put no. at. at. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, for those of you listening, I, I'm so sending funny. a selfie to uh, some... <laughs> Some some it's, people. It's my, I, don't yeah, know it's like I think my, this it's has my been staff. a great conversation. Okay, yeah, it's my team. and we and we can wrap it up. Um, but <laughs> I honestly feel like we actually did pretty good. Stay on kind of a top. Yeah, there were some branches, like but there. If, I mean, we, I could, we could go for like another two or three. Yeah, Dave hours. making up a second ascension. Other than that, <laughs> like we, no man. Heretic! <laughs> Get him out, dude. I literally I was researching that. I'm, gonna, I'm like, I'm okay, I, out, okay, bro. okay. I'm gonna cut that out. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so. On that note, yeah. I, I look the what I read is that the word touch, the the Greek word there is I, I'm not I'm not gonna probably pronounce it right, but haptuo, which 
which means that she laid hold of him and was clinging him. She didn't just touch him. She was clinging. She was clinging to him. And he goes, and, and she, was a, she wants she him was to a stage say, five clinger is what you're saying. She was a stage five clinger. And, 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 and it was what I, what I believe that means is that she wanted him to stay. And, and that was a moment similar to how the apostles looked at Jesus in Acts one and said, Lord, are you now going to restore yeah, yeah. Israel? And it's a moment where he goes, you guys don't see what I'm doing. He, she, he's trying to tell Mary, I have an even greater purpose. Well, he's done than that being once before. Here. Yeah. It's I not my a, time. Yeah. I have an even greater purpose than being here for you physically. I'm glad I get to be here. But Mary, I got to ascend to my father. Sure. You got to let go of me. Dang, so, so John just comes in with a little curveball at the end and says, I would like to just you, say right now to all the <laughs> Weird One fam that will watch this. I have taught you wrong in the past oh my God. in our conversations. So that's the correct way. And I do think that is the yeah. key to great leadership and pastoring. Yeah, is as we learn it's the along most the way. Trump thing he's ever done. Listen, though. I was wrong. No, but listen, let me show though. you. No, 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 no. Oh I, I know. I do think though because we're not going to get it right every time. We're yeah. learning as we go. But it is something about going back and be like, I didn't get this wrong. I've learned this. The Lord's revealed this. Scripture shows us this. We've like adopt. We can. I think with baptism. Yeah. I, I do think when you say, you know what, to our church, like, listen, it's more than just a celebration. Like, it's more than just a great photo. It's more than just declaring your faith. There is something spiritually happening here. Like, we, I do think we need to go to our church and say, we want to teach you. We haven't been, we haven't been teaching you properly everything. Mm -hmm. There's more to it. And I think, there, yeah. I think that's important for leaders listening. When you everybody, need to go, and everybody you need learning. to go back. You know, there's and stuff I'm back learning. And, there's stuff, yeah. And, and, and another food for thought in terms of, Anyone who has reservations about there being a physical and spiritual relationship to baptism is how many pastors put so much weight on people raising their hands during worship. Or how about this? How about anointing oil? Yeah. Yeah. And 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 why do people use anointing oil? Yeah, it's just water. It's it's just water. But is it just oil? It's just water. Oh, but but is it but but why do they have to raise their hands? And I just think it's interesting because it's just interesting. Why? But you understand I, that isn't scripture raising hands. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, I know it's not scripture. I'm saying no, it, though, it, it is scripture. What? Old, raising hands, Old Testament. N not, not for an altar call. Not, not in the way. <laughs> what are you talking, <laughs> talking about? Oh, in worship. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, bro. Yes, I, 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 listen, I don't have yeah. a problem with somebody yeah. raising yeah. their hand. Like, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just, yeah. But I even, was like, what are you talking but about? But even to that. But even to that point, there's, there's no the, sinner's the, prayer in the Bible. Right. But what I'm, what, what I'm more, I'm saying is like. The, on the worship point, that's a great example too of, of saying like they would have no problem. I would I would think most pastors, if we pulled them and said, "Is there a spiritual relationship to the physical act of raising hands?" They'd all be like, oh, "Yeah." Why is it easier for us to say Our that? Faith has to be embodied. But the reason right? what I'm saying is underneath it. Yes. Why is it yes. easier for them to say that right now? Because it's culturally normative. Because it's for cultural them. normative, yes. and there's a be, there's a more direct benefit to everyone raising their hands in our church. But I think what we have to embrace is that it is more inconvenient for us to teach what? I was going to say something that he would have had to edit out, so I decided okay, to say it. Okay, say it to me after. <laughs> I just think it, it's important, and we're all this way. We are all guilty of, at times, yes. trying to, on God's behalf, remove elements of what it means to follow Jesus so that more people can follow Jesus and make it more simple. And sometimes in the name of making things more efficient at church, I, we remove its effectiveness. I don't even think it's about making it more simple. I think we try to make the moment more okay, but powerful. I, I think but it also, depends on the church. But, I think there's lots but, of churches you know, who would like, argue the efficiency. Also, what if it's, it might be that, but what if there's some churches and they just, they, they believe their ordinances, not sacraments. They believe they're just symbols. You know, I'm just saying there could be just yeah, yeah. somebody either disagrees with it, they're ignorant of it or whatever. There, and there might, I, mean, I, I believe there's probably yeah. tons of that. There's this over overreach of we're wanting to smooth every crack in the ground and make things as simple as possible. And yeah. for sure, I also think sometimes, you know, for like it was for me when I started diving into this stuff, um, specifically on sa a sacramental theology, for me, it was never like, I was trying to make it too easy. I don't think. I mean, maybe there was an element yeah. of that. It was just, I wasn't convinced of it until I had started reading some of it. Yeah, I, I'm just so, saying. I there's a lot of there's a lot of churches that I'm exposed to. Yeah, that would that their argument. Yeah, yeah, would yeah. be we don't have time to do that. Okay, well, yeah, that's a horrible. <laughs> no, but, no, but I'm, I'm saying no. But I'm saying I think I think uh, this. This is what I was saying yesterday. Please. You should go up to Peter and be like this. You should clarify. They don't really need to get baptized, right? That, that's just an extra step. 
I, I'm just saying, I think there's <laughs> the more box. churches that are like, that have subscribed to the seeker-sensitive, attractional model that that they have more of a methodology of efficiency in the... Like, like keep, the, our, keep our service to an hour. Keep it going. We need to... Like, but I think, I think there, then the other ones that we would see that have the followers and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff... It's not about even that. They don't mind going an hour and a half, hour 45, whatever. It's not about that. It's about how do we make this the most cheer section, light move. Yeah. And I'm telling you, like, yeah. we have all that. We we cheer. We we dunk during Which worship. There's like, there's no problem with that. Yeah, we should celebrate it. It, yeah. it isn't. It, but it isn't about just marking a moment. It's about truly a life being can, changed can you and imagine, marked and transformed. Can, can you imagine what a church... Sorry, I'm talking so far away from the mic. Can you imagine just like, let's even just say a youth group, right? Young believers who were taught systematically and, and then and then through the way we organize our programs. Dude, when that guy went under that water, oh, you know what it means? Imagine, I don't think we need to coach. Rather people. than, dude, sick pick on NCAA. Yeah, or like, or like, or like, hey, everyone, make sure just at our church, we just believe that it's, it's a public sign of declaration and the old is gone and the new has come. So make sure we, we clap here. No, no, no. If we had a church discipled in, in a, I'm saying me even too, like this conversation is even helping me change the way I view baptism. And I'm like, I don't think we need to tell people to cheer. I think that they would. It's not an overflow of understanding. They'd be like, you're going, holy I crap. Gotta cheer right now Sarah, because I get it. Sarah just died and then she was brought back in new life with Christ. 100. And, oh my gosh. The ser like, dude, I think that's actually such a cool thing we should think about is if like churches started taking two photos. Here's the before. For me, I don't even, I, I truly like when there's a real tangible, like move of God's presence in somebody's life, a change happening, whatever, how you want to say it. I can't even cheer. I just start crying. Cause for me, it's like, it's so real. It's, it's just God all over somebody and them all, like all over God kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't even cheer. Like the whole room can be cheering. I'm just sitting there just weeping. And I, I do I do think I do think that we have I say we very loosely, very broadly, but we as the capital C have subscribed to a cookie cutter, very tangible and easy to grasp. Mm -hmm understanding of too many aspects of the faith even this yep. what's the thought that's always been said it's salvation is free but discipleship costs you everything mm -hmm. should there be a disconnect like i've said that should there be a disconnect between salvation and discipleship should like shouldn't it be the process the great of commission doesn't mean that jesus didn't use the, the word salvation thing? in the great commission shouldn't salvation be the first step to being a disciple of jesus is like are is there a disconnect like i'm just I, i'm just saying what we've tried to do peter didn't pray is make prayer. everything simple Andrew didn't and, pray and, and, prayer. and and right and tangible and and i i understand the attempt but just the more i do this like 14 years in ministry and however the heck many sermons I've preached, it's like, yes, following Jesus, but, I don't know. I don't think it's simple. Here, I, think, I think his love for us is like in all of that simple, but I, I think you're signing up for the hardest, many times most complicated journey of your life. And I think it's, we always, we're always just like, you know, Jesus loves you and he died for you and, you know, like... No, like, here we go. Good luck. Let's get it. You're going to need the Holy Spirit because you'll never be able to do this without him. Like, this is going to be the hardest thing, like marriage, <laughs> that you'll ever have signed up for. Like, marriage has amazing seasons, and it's also really hard at times. And I don't even know if I'm making sense, but I just no. I just feel like too, like even I'm, I'm looking at, uh, like, a, I'm watching a timeline back of just some of the things I've said, and I'm, like, replaying them. I'm just like, you idiot. Yeah, that's all of us, though. Yeah, like, that's all of and us. And it's, it's healthy. So I, I'm learning. And the yeah. reason I think part of the reason why we got here, we have to remember, is, is, the modern church movement that we now see a lot, a lot of it. The ones we're seeing on social media, you know, a lot of it. You know, we've all been blessed through. We've all been a part of. You know, we are it, is because, it was deemed there was a time in America where where Americans attended church, but they did not live out the gospel. 
and that church was full of programs, you know, the words ritual. This is where the whole idea of like, it's, it's a relationship, not a religion. And so there was a, and I would even, let's just err on the side of optimism and, and say, maybe there was even a necessary stripping back of some of the programs, of some of the, the, the milieu. You know, maybe there's a very necessary, like, you, I, I would say like additive of creativity and program and excellence to like a boring Baptist, a boring Methodist church, right? And well, we got, there's pizza at youth group. That's cool. You know, like we, we songs are creative, right? Like, like, and I think though in some of that process, um, we got to enjoy the fact that many Christians for the last couple of decades, just because of how church was, because of how America was, they had Sunday school knowledge. They had some of this stuff. I think sometimes you're like, well, we don't need a baptism class. Everyone knows what it is. They just don't live it out. I, you know, I think though we're entering into an era in America where it's not where we live anymore. Like we don't have cultural, like Gen Z, Gen Alpha, not growing up like with like lack of knowledge, and therefore I, I actually think religion, a, a resurgence of, of religion, meaning a structured, systematic way of understanding and relating to God is actually what is necessary for revival in America. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's because that religion... It's the structure or the pot that gives room for the plant inside of it to actually flourish and grow. Yep. It is structure that leads to organic growth. Yep. Not not in competition with one or the other. No yeah. one would ever say in a fit, no one would ever say, especially with how like big fitness is in like the church, no one would ever say, oh man, I just hate those, all those systematic workouts. Oh, so religious at that gym. I don't follow a plan. I just kind of get yeah, inspired. I, I just, I just, I don't follow a plan or a diet. I just, I just walk into the gym and I just, I just eat whatever I want because, but think about that. Like, right, yeah. When we say religion, we mean we're helping people like have the handles like even right now I'm in a I'm in a season in my personal devotions where I I'm preaching a lot right now I'm making a lot of content and it has been hard for me mm -hmm. to approach my personal times with God mm -hmm. as personal times right and right, so right. I've had I've created a daily order if you will yep a a a ritual if you will of just here's what I do so for me, it's a rule what, of life. A yeah. rule of life, because I, if I don't, I would just get lost in sermon prep, Pri get lost private in content. Liturgy, yeah. And so, like for me, like um, yeah, like I, I've just created some steps. And even even right now, I'm like I don't even want to share it because it's not about what I do. It's just about the fact that I have something. Totally. So call that religion, but that's why I'm gonna that's why I'm gonna follow Jesus ten years from now. And 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 the amount of times I have now experienced. Moments, not every time, but I've experienced the power of the Holy Spirit and those tangible moments of God by following that order. So I just think religion, I think what no well, one you is specifically said, though, revival. And everyone yeah. sees revival as, and I won't name conferences or anything like that because I'm, I'm not trying to put them down, but go to this conference, go to this, and the move of the Holy Spirit is going to happen. Great, great weekend. Holy Spirit for sure did something, but then what do you do with it afterwards? And I think like a conversation like this or like, the, some of the things you're referencing, just the knowledge in the pot kind of concept, they are the actual pieces to keep you growing. Everybody wants to grow overnight. I, I, I can't think of something, maybe you guys can, but there's very few things, if any, that grow overnight. Everything grows over time. When you're talking about like 10 years from now, what you're planning for is a marriage, a family you're raising with your kids, your personal life that's going to grow in great ways over time. A personal revival each day, like if you'd call it that, over time. Not, man, I went to this conference, Holy Spirit popped off. You should have heard when they were singing this song. More like Jesus came in Baca. He was going nuts. True. I, I love that song. Like, you got that guy coming at your conference. Like, I love those moments. I love when I can just. It's date night. I'm gonna Those go, are great moments. They're just I'm going to go back to Michigan after this, yes, though. Exactly. And what am I going to continue to do once I go back to yeah. Michigan? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. No, my wife and I, we have those amazing date nights where it was like, you know, the food was amazing, and we yeah. laughed and whatever. But that's just not every day. We get those moments. But yeah, and just because it's planned and structured, we have to if we want to have a date night. There's no way to not. You to just on a whim. Yeah. 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 Does it mean that it's not? There's not going to be intimacy, and there's not going to be like real one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, religion um, is the key to revival. I think I'm the first person I've heard say that. Is your next tattoo? Ah! <laughs> Do 
Do not put the marquee. To make, oh, oh, to make it under. clear. No, 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 no. He mute will never him, have a tattoo. No, to make I'm it kidding. clear. I'm kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. He's, He's about to open up a can uh, right now. <laughs> well, I thought at one point, and we got to wrap up, but I thought, because I'm assuming you guys want to eat. I thought at one point we were going to go down the tr- the rabbit trail of uh, rabbit hole <laughs> of uh, infant baptism, and I thought this will go another hour. I did want to do that, and I I didn't know if we had the time. Yeah. Sprinkling. Even, like, there was, a, there was a man, 80-some years old, couldn't get out of a chair. My dad sprinkled him. Great. He couldn't get dumped. Yeah, but that's different than a two. I know, but I'm saying that's a whole yeah. conversation in itself, yeah. right there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if people okay. are interested in that, put it Let, in the in the comments or take, whatever, and you could do another podcast gets later to, on it. Say one thing about it, and we we give it as the perspective oh, of fathers. No, is that bad? Is that bad? No, you can't. I'm just saying okay. this is such a big discu- uh, it's discussion. A, I, I was going to say I was joking. You should do another action. podcast on it. I was. I was joking. I was joking. We can. No, we can totally do that. I'm just saying. It's such a big discussion it's, it's that lot. it's hard to yeah, it's a lot. cram. Okay. All right. But we can't. No, no, let's do it. No. We'll do a follow-up on Zoom. I'm really hungry. You could even do just... We'll come right back after lunch. Why don't you do this? Why don't you just say infant baptism, no explanation right now, yes or no, and then talk about it later. The problem is... Uh, we, but we, don't, we, we won't defend it. We just say I, yes or no. Do we know, can, just so, <laughs> for my edification, are there people that we know that would be pro-infant? Yeah. Who? We'll talk after okay. the podcast. <laughs> okay. I just want to. Okay. If people are actually interested, they'll say it in a comment. And you can talk about it later. If they're not, they don't care. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about it on our own. Yeah. If they're not interested, Absolutely. we don't need to put them yeah. on podcast. Praise God. Thank Guys, you, everyone. if you want to follow John, Dave, we'll, we'll put the um, their their links in uh, the description of the show. Thank you guys for joining the Sexy Theology Thanks Podcast. For us. Thanks for the Dutch Bros, man. Absolutely. Too. I made sure to say the word <laughs> orgasm once on the Sexy Theology Podcast. Now twice. Thank you. Now twice. You're yeah, welcome. I was wondering, is that going to get cut or not? Because it Heck, depends how far, no. I, how far I spread this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> if you want to help them. I'm trying to get the views. So maybe <laughs> yeah. I'll, have a, I'll have a special episode just for you. That has been cut out. <laughs> it's a... All right. Thank you, guys. Um, well, hey, for real, if you do want to support the show, we're trying to buy some gear. Uh, go ahead and check that out down below if you want to do reoccurring or not. But either way, thanks for watching, subscribing, whatever. See you next episode. Peace out. Bye.